Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, good morning. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. My name is Robert and I'm grateful to have you tuning in today. I've got a question for us as we get started, and that is, what does it take for you to believe something? Like, what does it require? What evidence do you need? Is it that you need data and facts and you need to, to look at the specifications? You need to look at the, the written down uh, facts of the matter. Do you need historical evidence? You got to say, hey, I need to know uh, the background of this of what's taking place and, and I have to know it from that side. Maybe you uh, like social proof or the reviews and testimony of people. Uh, I don't know about you, but when I buy things, I love reading reviews and hearing what actual users think about a product before I make my decision. Or maybe you're like, hey, I need scientific evidence. I need to know that this will work. I need to know that this is real, that it's true, whatever it might be. Um, because uh, what it requires for us internally as people, we're all wired a little differently. What does it take for us to believe something? And, and this is a, a relevant conversation and question for us because with our faith in walking with Jesus, there is an element where we need to get to a place of believing him and believing his promises. But the difficult thing is we may not get the evidences we require. We may not have the facts and data that we want. We may not have the historical evidences that we think we need. Now it's there, uh, same with scientific and social proof, but sometimes our brains leave us wanting a little bit more. And I was reminded of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Uh, and so in Hebrews 11, it's this, this, this chapter that talks about these characters in Scripture that have immense faith that cause them to do things that maybe they didn't fully understand, that maybe people around them were looking at, like, why on earth would you do that? But they believed in God, and God blessed them because of their faith. Even though they didn't have uh, the, the data, the, the evidences, the full instructions, the big picture that they were looking for. And I bring this up because today we're going to look at a passage of scripture that is kind of a it's, a, it's a big story, but it's not in terms of the amount of time given to it in the, the Gospel of Matthew. It's more of a passing comment of these events that took place, but it highlights faith even when people didn't have the information. Because Jesus is going to go to a place that... Outside of this, we have no prior uh, record of him doing ministry in this area. He hadn't passed through here before, at least not that is recorded in Scripture. Uh, and yet, the people showed up, and they showed up in faith. So let's take a look. Matthew chapter 14, the last few verses of this chapter, verses 34 through 36, say this. It says, Now when they had crossed over, they came to a land at Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, that is Jesus, they sent around to all in that region and brought to him all who were sick. And they implored him that they might only touch the fringe of his garment. And hear this, he says, and as many as touched it were made well. That's it. Uh, that's all we have. Uh, it is uh, insufficient because there, it, for us, because we want, we want to know more because it seems like a pretty big deal. They somehow had heard about this Jesus. They, word had gotten to them, and they connected the dots when Jesus and the disciples landed there and got off the boat and started interacting, and they sent people out. And here's two things I want to highlight for us out of this. And the first is the power of Jesus' uh, presence in that place. All that was needed was for them to touch the fringe of his garment. Now, this might sound similar. There's a, a, another miraculous healing story recorded in the book of Luke and Mark about a woman who touched the fringe of Jesus' garment in a crowded place and was healed of a long-term illness that she had. And, and so this isn't the only place in Scripture we get that, that people were just coming up and touching the fringe, the edges, the, the hem of his robe or his garment. But that's all it took. All it took for these people to be made well was to simply touch the clothing that Jesus was wearing. The, the Son of God and Savior of the world had the power that there wasn't this fancy healing ceremony, there wasn't this, this special phrase or process they had to go through. They just simply needed to interact with them to be made well. And it says everyone who did it was made well. But the other thing that we see that I think is even uh, as powerful as that is the faith of these people. See, they, they believed that all they had to do was touch the fringe. They hadn't gotten to see Jesus do this. They had heard about it. There was some, some testimony that had gotten to them somehow. They had heard word, and they showed up in faith. They hadn't seen it, but they had assurance that this thing that they hoped for would be true. 
They lived out what Hebrews 11.1 1 says, that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. They hoped for healing. And even though they hadn't seen it, they were convinced that this would be true if they simply had the opportunity. And Jesus met them where they were with their faith. So today, where's your faith in God? Where, where would you place yourself? Is it in a place where it's strong that you say, hey, even if I don't see, even if I don't understand, even if I, there's some questions, I trust God and I'm there with him. Are you in a place of wondering, of questioning, of going, man, I just don't know. And if that's you today, let me encourage you to, to, to reach out to Jesus. And we're not in a place where we can physically touch the, the hem of his garment, but I know that when we reach out and seek to be in his presence, to spend time with him by reading his word, by being engaged in worship and hearing his word taught in a church service, by, by spending time with him in prayer, that God's going to meet us where we're at. He's going to help us grow that faith, and he's going to show that he is real, that he is active and truthful in our life. But it takes us saying, hey, I'm going to make that effort. I'm going to reach out. I'm going to seek to be in his presence so that he can do something miraculous in my life. So if you are in a place of, of struggle, of questioning, or if you're like, I believe, I just want more, then let me challenge you to find ways to, to draw near to the presence of God and see what happens as a result. Have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.